Hi everyone, good morning and welcome to another fantastic Launchpad webinar series from us here at ALM. We've got a full house today, uh, you've got the majority of the team here, uh, you've got everyone from myself, Chris Ballon, the marketing manager at ALM, to uh, Amalia on the sales team, say hi. Yes, good morning everyone, thank uh, you for joining us again. We've got Armando. Armando, if you uh, like good morning, it. everyone. Happy to be here this morning. Yeah, happy to be here this morning, uh, and look forward to uh, uh, another edition of uh, a Launchpad and participating. So definitely excited to be here today. Fantastic, and we've got a special guest speaker today as well. Heidi, if you'd like to say hello. Sorry, folks. I just needed to unmute myself. Yeah, I'm really, really happy to be here. Looking forward to the webinar. I attend all your webinars because I think they, they're great and educational. So uh, yeah, I'll be happy to, to speak when my time comes. Just call on me, I'm here. Fantastic. Thanks, Heidi. Pleasure having you today. Uh, let's dive right into it. Today we're going to cover uh, some news and articles, as we always do. Uh, Armando is going to speak a bit about our uh, marketing automation offerings as well and how ALM can assist you and partner with you. Uh, we do have an interview with our special guest speaker, Heidi, today. Uh, we do want to highlight our promotion for October as well. And then, of course, at the end, we'll take any questions you might have. Diving right into it, uh, covering some important news from our marketing side, uh, Google has announced that they will be dividing their search index between desktop and mobile. Uh, this is a, a big split. Currently, both search indexes are, uh, are unified. Uh, right now, uh, mobile results are based on desktop performance, and desktop results are based on mobile performance. It's kind of a, a big uh, sharing hug right now, but uh, these two indexes are about to get divorced. Uh, the desktop index and mobile index will be separate from, uh, from here on out. Uh, this means that uh, your desktop performance will not reflect on your mobile performance, and your mobile performance will not reflect on your desktop performance. Uh, the most important bit of this news, though, is that Google's mobile index has been announced as their new primary index. That's very important information as it's come to light that uh, the mobile performance, the mobile rankings are going to be more often refreshed. They're going to be more often updated and they're going to be what Google's looking at as a primary source of ranking and indexing now. Uh, now, that's very important. Uh, this is a, a, a big shift. Uh, now you're going to be uh, ranked more based on your, mo your site's mobile compatibility than on your desktop compatibility. If you've got two different sites, your mobile site and your desktop site, your mobile site is going to be looked at in priority now over your desktop site. This also uh, means that your, your usability uh, and your focus or your mobile site needs to be as on point as your desktop site now. Uh, this split also means that there will be fewer updates to the desktop index, fewer changes to desktop rankings over time, essentially. What this means is that there's going to be fewer crawls of desktop compatible sites only. This means that you're going to see less fluctuation throughout desktop rankings over time now. Now Google has made it clear that their emphasis is going to be mobile indexing and their mobile ranking performance. You can see some tweets here that came out of this uh, PubCon discussion uh, where Google announced this change uh, earlier uh, the, uh, the last week or so, uh, or two weeks ago rather. Uh, Google is still going to have a, a desktop index. It's not going to be as fresh. Uh, the mobile first index does change quite a few uh, parameters that we want to look at as marketers as well, which is very important. So what does this split mean? What does this mean for us as marketers and online marketers? This means that the focus is now going to be on smaller mobile sites. Uh, this means that you know, we aren't going to have uh, a page per keyword for 50 keywords on a site anymore. 
a mobile site is technically very slimmed down and uh, very narrow. You're going to have you know five pages on your mobile site compared to 50 on your desktop site. That means that the optimizations that are on your mobile site need to be much more streamlined as well. You can't take advantage of volume on a mobile site the way you can on a desktop site. It also means there's less emphasis on images as well for the most part, unless you are an image heavy uh, client or, or you have an image heavy client, uh, there's going to be less emphasis on images. Uh, it's more about usability and it's going to be less about optimizing these images on a, a mobile site because there are fewer images on most mobile sites. Uh, less emphasis on text heavy pages. Right now, there's a rule of thumb that you need 250 to 500 words of content on a site for best SEO practice. When looking at mobile sites first, that's not the case. You aren't going to have somebody browsing on mobile who is reading through that much content. Now it's going to be brevity. It's going to be saying what you mean and targeting what you mean within as few words as possible. These text-heavy pages aren't going to be as weighted as heavily anymore. Uh, there's going to be more emphasis on compatibility and usability. Uh, this is something that we've seen coming for quite some time since uh, earlier this year. Uh, Google rolled out their mobile Geddon, where uh, sites aren't ranking as highly on mobile devices if they aren't mobile compatible. Now that's even more important. That is more important than ever with the mobile index being fresher. Uh, if your site isn't compatible with mobile devices, if you don't have a, a mobile usable site, then you aren't going to be indexed as often and you aren't going to show up as highly in Google's primary index, their mobile index. Uh, and then, of course, uh, as I mentioned, smaller sites, smaller mobile sites mean fewer targeted phrases. This means we don't have as much content to work with and we don't have as many keywords to work with. So it's, uh, it's essential and it's important that we, uh, we are efficient with our optimizations and with our strategy, especially now that we know that Google is going to be weighing their mobile devices heavier than their desktop devices. Okay? This is a very interesting development uh, and uh, more information about it is coming out uh, daily. Uh, it's still going to be seen what kind of long running ramifications are held from this split but uh, seeing that Google is going to be favoring their mobile index heavier than their desktop index is, uh, is, is big news. It, it's something that we here at ALM will be uh, paying specific attention to uh, as more developments come. So stay tuned. Uh, we'll be covering this in, in future webinars as well. Uh, and uh, as soon as we receive more information, we'll be certain to share it. Now, Amalia, you had some updates to share as well? I do, in fact. Uh, thank you very much, Chris. That was great. Uh, Sora, I do uh, apologize. It seems that I'm having a little bit of uh, technical difficulties here, uh, but I just uh, regained that. So thank you for being patient there. Um, basically, I want to share this current article. It's called Google Ads Forecasting and Trend Data for Existing Keywords in Keyword Planner. Basically, by selecting existing in keywords or campaigns, it allows you to see how bid scaling could actually affect performance. Um, advertisers can basically now get forecasts for their existing keywords uh, in addition to the campaigns in a keyword planner. Uh, if you haven't checked out the feature in the keyword planner, we definitely think it's worth che checking out. So definitely take a look at that if you can. Um, if you refer to the image that you see here on our uh, template, you'll find the following. Uh, by selecting from account button, Okay, there's a, basically you'll see that there. There's an option to select campaign or keyword from a drop-down. Okay, after making your selection, the tool does offer performance forecasting and various looks at search volume trends. In the performance forecast screen, you can see how changes in bids could affect performance for the campaigns or keywords selected. 
A quality indicator is based on the amount of the data already available in the account. So if you notice on the image on the right, it will basically show you the search volume trends and the overall average monthly searches as well as search volume trends broken out by device and location. So if there's any competitive domain data available, Google will also find that the, it'll show the trend data at the bottom of this view. So you can also see that the forecasted impact of adding new keywords. After adding any new keywords, by clicking on the new keywords option in the left field, you can choose all keywords. Um, and basically it will allow you to see the daily forecast for the existing and new keywords combined. So uh, I definitely want to share that with all of you. Um, Chris, did you want to add any feedback to this? Uh, it's fantastic to see that, that Google is working at uh, adding in some new features to their Keyword Planner tool after they removed some features earlier this year. Uh, it, it doesn't quite make up for what they removed in terms of forecasting for number of impressions or search volume, but this, uh, this mm -hmm. definitely does help uh, with, with trend forecasting as well. So it's good to see that they are adding some functionality back in. Yes, very much so. Thank you, Chris. Okay, so this is uh, another item I want to share with everyone. Uh, it's basically for manufacturers that are selling retail chains. Uh, Google is basically launching affiliate location ad extensions. Uh, these extension lets manufacturers show users nearby retail chains where their products are actually carried in their AdWords ad. Uh, the original manufacturer of manufacturers that sell the goods in a retail chain can now actually begin promoting those locations to nearby consumers within their own AdWords ads. So Google announced the launch of the affiliate location extensions in the AdWords last Thursday. Basically, it's allowing all these manufacturers a new way to support their offline retail distribution efforts on Google. Uh, with the near me searches continuing to increase on mobile, the new extension offers an in the ad where to buy option for manufacturers that may or may not sell directly to the consumers on their own websites or at retail locations. Uh, we basically added a little image there for you to refer to. Um, so basically like regular location extensions, the affiliate location extensions will show the nearest locations where the product is actually carried inclusive to the address or a map. Uh, and they'll sh uh, basically they'll also show the multiple retailers nearby. Uh, in addition, Google says that using these extensions may also enable some manufacturers to be eligible for store visits data in the AdWords, which will help show how the ads drive in store foot traffic. As uh, with all store visits data, eligibility is based on volume, so ads have to drive enough clicks and in-store visits to meet st statistical confidence levels. So I want to share that. Um, Chris, did you want to add anything to that as well? Yeah, it's interesting that uh, mm -hmm. that, that they're they're adding this in. Uh, I, I know we've covered in previous webinars before the importance of converting digital visits to physical visits and physical conversions, since that's still the primary way people are converting is through physical locations. Uh, but it's kind of backwards that they're doing it that that they only offer this to people that can prove they get a statistical. Uh, a statistically reliable amount of foot traffic in their store from online visits. Uh, you would think that they want to do it the other way around and help promote people that uh, want to improve that. Uh, so while they're doing this early rollout, I can see them doing it in phases where they they are only doing it for people that are confident are getting, or sorry, businesses that are confident that they're getting regular in-store foot traffic and uh, physical conversions, but it would be interesting to see if and when they're going to roll this out for uh, everyone else on the whole. Uh, it's going to be a, a good, interesting way to take those digital, uh, vi digital visits, that digital interest, and turn it into physical conversions when we're able to roll this out for uh, every consumer. Uh, being able to target your geotarget with AdWords specifically and then let them know, by the way, you're only two blocks away from a place where you can purchase this, that's fantastic. That, that's going to be a great way to turn digital interest into physical conversion. But again, I, I feel that at this point it's a little backwards that they're making you prove that you already have the, the uh, physical conversions from digital traffic in order to 
be eligible for this program at the moment. That's great. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Amalia. Okay, now, uh, Armando, you wanted to speak about marketing automation. Uh, excellent. Thank you, uh, uh, Chris, uh, for uh, having me today. And, you know, there has been a lot of talk in regards to marketing automation. And as a matter of fact, um, it was one of the hot topics at this year's global convention. So we wanted to um, share some information in regards to, as a, as a WSI production center, what we are doing uh, from 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 uh, perspective of uh, supplier. And um, I know that a few weeks back I talked uh, a little bit about the things that we, we are, we've been working on in regards to marketing automation. So I'm going to basically kind of touch base on that as well today. And um, I'm lucky to have a guest speaker today uh, as well who's been working with me uh, in some, um, uh, in a very uh, uh, extent capacity uh, to um, uh, offer these services to uh, uh, to clients who are looking at you know, moving to the next level of their marketing via marketing automation. So definitely, we'll be um, introducing her in a few in a few uh, minutes. But before I move forward, um, just to kind of recap and uh, provide the IC community uh, a bit of a background in regards to our experience at ALM. Uh, you're looking at a combined experience of over 10 years in marketing automation. Uh, definitely, we've been working uh, with uh, specific tools uh, for quite a quite a while now. And uh, the only thing is that we haven't really made it very official to uh, uh, work with uh, uh, the WCICs as we have a retail division that was focusing a lot on marketing automation based on our experience uh, with sales performance management and uh, lead generation and demand gen. Uh, but just to give you an example, uh, we've actually been able to successfully implement um, over 5,000 uh, uh, assist or 5,000 5, instances uh, from various different tools and I'm going to get into that. Uh, we've also done migrations. Uh, sometimes clients want to migrate from one system so let's say they're looking at migrating from system A to system B. Uh, obviously uh, that's a, you know, depending on the, the data, depending on the way it's been structured, can be a laborious um, project, and we've uh, had this, the ability to successfully do that. And and also, uh, we've been um, able to work with clients on their ongoing development and evolution of their marketing automation practice in-house. Uh, some clients that we work with, you know what, uh, they actually want us to take over and pretty much be their marketing automation back office team, uh, while other clients, they want to grow their team in-house, and they, they originally or initially in the first few months, uh, we become their 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 in-house team, and and then we start training their in-house their actual employees to become their their in-house marketing automation team. So that's the level of experience that we bring. We've seen um, some very good and interesting projects as well, and uh, uh, it brings us that experience to work with the IC community. Uh, one thing that you have to also understand that at the end of the day, marketing automation is to uh, definitely be part of that lead generation machine, and you want to be able to successfully uh, develop nurturing campaigns that are going to generate leads, and that's one of the things that we've been able to do uh, uh, as a team uh, for our clients, and now working with uh, a, a number of ICs uh, within the WSI network. Uh, if you ever, you know, if the, you ever get the question, what type of experience, uh, uh, you know, do we we bring to the table, or your supplier brings to the table. So you're looking at verticals in the tech sector, uh, professional services, financial services, uh, franchising, health, and manufacturing. These are services right now that are experiencing a lot of growth uh, in this area. Uh, some of them perhaps moving to a mature level, but some of them still in the infancy. But are are are, are um, uh, becoming uh, uh, adopters of marketing automation. So just to give you a bit of an experience about, about what uh, WSILM brings to the table and what we can provide to your clients if you ever need any assistance. So to the next slide, uh, please, um, uh, Chris. And then we always get asked about technologies, right? Uh, so uh, we have worked uh, primarily with uh, uh, some of the you know, enterprise mid-size uh, 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 technologies in marketing automation. Uh, we work with Adobe, Marketo, which is very popular. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we worked with some ICs in the past in some Marketo engagements as well. Uh, Influitive, uh, the big ones such as Oracle, Eloqua, which is more for enterprise uh, uh, marketing automation uh, implementations and also uh, managing services, uh, as well as uh, Salesforce. And um, uh, because of uh, working with uh, uh, Heidi uh, Schwende, who's based out of Toronto, Canada, who 
uh, basically uh, we've teamed up with her in working with Salesforce and um, in the past we've primarily done this as a non-certified or registered partner but as of last year we became a, a, an official registered partner and now we're looking at becoming uh, uh, developing our practice uh, with uh, CRM and we've actually just uh, finalized that this past few months uh, past month, sorry, uh, and uh, we've mainly been working with their product system, which is right here in the middle, as well as their marketing cloud. So these are, you know, B two B product and B two C marketing cloud. Uh, and when you're looking at, you know, product, you're looking at lead generation, uh, very structured B two B process. It can be used for B two C, uh, but when you're looking at millions of records and millions of contacts, you're now looking at a big application like uh, marketing cloud. So we've had the opportunity to work with that. Um, and then obviously about uh, two years ago we worked with HubSpot. Uh, we actually became a one the first uh, production team at WSI uh, to become certified with HubSpot, so we do have that in-house experience as well. And I know that uh, SharpSpring is something relative new uh, to WSI and it was uh, revealed at, uh, at uh, this year's global convention. And we have been working with SharpSpring in the past more as uh, assisting clients who had already implemented SharpSpring. We've kind of uh, helped them with their uh, campaigns, et cetera. We're not an official partner right now, but uh, we're definitely look, looking uh, forward to working with ICs out there who are looking at becoming partners, but they don't want to be able to deal with the whole technical side. They just want to become partners, uh, work directly with their clients. And what we will do is we will be your technical team. Right, uh, because we do have the experience, and uh, one of the things that I can share with you is that based on our experience over the past ten years, uh, the technology is very important. But what we try to do at ALM is match the right automation automation technology to your client based on their needs, requirements, goals, uh, ob objectives, as well as budgets. Right, so uh, uh, we're very uh, uh, agnostic. Yes, we have a very strong relationship with uh, 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 with some of these. Uh, uh, marketing automation technologies, uh, but at the end of the day, we will also try to do what's best for the client. Okay, um, so you know more to come in the next uh, few weeks in regards to our development with uh, uh, with Salesforce as well as with SharpSpring. Uh, if you don't mind moving to the next slide, please, uh, Chris. Excellent. So. Uh, before I bring uh, uh, Heidi on board to the to the webinar, just to kind of give you a bit of an example of how we work with the ICs, uh, you know, we've had. Uh, 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 we've had great experiences working with ICs in the pre-sales and sales support, uh, really educating their clients about marketing automation. It's such a buzzword today, uh, specifically in marketing, and everybody's you know kind of jumping on the bandwagon, if you will. They see it as the next shiny object. And what we try to do is really uh, determine if your of your prospect, right? If you're looking at a prospect or your existing client is a fit. Right, and really matching you to the right uh, marketing automation solution. Uh, once we have that pre-sales and sales support that we provide to the ICs, we get into the implementation mode, and that's where we have certified experts uh, with experience. These are marketing technologists. Why I would even say they're more marketing driven than technologies because uh, the way we look at marketing automation is just that the technology is a very important tool, but it's the strategy that makes it a success. Right, uh, so to 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 add value to our clients, we're not just a technical implementer. We're not just programmers or developers that configure your the, your client's uh, marketing automation instance. We're actually looking at everything from a marketing lens. Okay, uh, so to do that, we go through discovery sessions, uh, project planning, and consulting. And uh, one of the uh, um, uh, benefits of the, of the marketing automation uh, services that we're conducting today uh, is that we're using a higher level of resource obviously who are certified and primarily they're, inter they're interfacing with clients so uh, there is an opportunity if you don't want to get involved you just want to be put in that account manager role uh, customer relationship role where we come in and we actually fulfill the whole PM uh, project management service we actually interact with the client from the beginning of the project till the end Right uh, when it comes to the technical side and the implementation, if you don't mind, uh, Chris, uh, going to the next slide, please. And the last uh, slide before I bring Heidi uh, is partnering with WSI ICs. Uh, basically, you know, uh, the implementation component is one of the areas that's a revenue uh, maker for ICs, but it's not the main one. The main one where you want to really build a foundation is through managed services, so the ongoing support that you give your clients, and that's where we team up with with ICs to help them identify what are the best managed service programs for them. Right? These engagements could be anything from three months to six months to 12 months. Uh, it really depends on the needs of the client. 
right? Uh, and uh, that's that's uh, one of the things that we won't want to partner with ICs so they can you know they can see uh, the rev the recurring revenue stream increase over time, right? And not just the upfront fee for implementation, uh, technical implementation one time. It's really about that building that you know cash cow for you. Uh, uh, making sure you have that, and obviously, you know, if you were to say, you know, what what does WSI ALM bring to the table? Well, what we bring to the table is really that thought leadership. The 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 fact of the matter that when we look at any client, we want to make sure that they have the right digital marketing blueprint, right? Uh, they have a strategy, a a digital marketing strategy that combines with marketing strategy, marketing automation strategy, right? And at the end of the day, you we want to make sure that. The the uh, workflows, the uh, uh, the uh, drip programs, uh, the the types of uh, 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 programs that we put within the marketing in, uh, automation instance uh, are lead gen and demand gen driven, right? Uh, and as always, uh, we're always looking at what else can we offer uh, our clients. And this is a great opportunity that WSIICs have, uh, is that they can always uh, upsell their clients uh, in digital marketing services because once you have the technology you have to fill the top of the funnel you have to add fuel to your marketing automation uh, solution and that's where you have services such as SEO paid search uh, uh, paid social organic social solutions uh, these are things that um, and many more uh, that we that you can offer your clients depending on their on their on their goals uh, requirements objectives and budgets in order to make it a successful marketing automation uh, uh, practice for them that generates ROI so these are the things that we work with uh, with uh, WSIICs. And uh, Chris, if you don't mind uh, moving to the next slide, I'm just gonna now uh, uh, br uh, bring here uh, uh, Heidi uh, Heidi Schwende, who's based out of Toronto, Canada. Uh, she's uh, a bit about about uh, Heidi is that uh, she's the Chief Digital Officer for Digital Moxie, uh, 15 years plus of strategic digital leadership experience, uh, 10, uh, 10 years marketing automation expertise. So she'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, being working with not just you know your SMBs, SMBs but really mid-sized and enterprise background, uh, understand technology, can work with uh, C-level uh, executives, uh, decision makers, and I think that's one of the uh, many things that she brings to the table that's made her, you know, uh, embrace marketing automation and had some early successes in growing from there. Uh, she's also uh, uh, holds a few positions at VP, uh, board VP at Image Impact International, uh, uh, extensive experience with the Canadian um, uh, the CSAE, which is an association for Canadian executives, uh, both in the mobile advisory board as well as in technology advisory board capacity. And um, you know what? She's a Google all-star. So uh, definitely a good uh, profile uh, to take on this project. So um, I wanted to uh, introduce us. Uh, Heidi, thank you for being with us today. Uh, wanted to touch base with you and because we've been working for uh, quite a while in, in, in the marketing automation uh, uh, um, field landscape in the past uh, months, I wanted to bring you in to kind of share some, some of your experience and um, you know if there's ICs out there that are looking at potentially moving uh, or adding this uh, to their business model, this service uh, uh, to their business model, you know what can they expect? Uh, what are you know what are the good, the bad, and the ugly? But um, before I, s I start, uh, perhaps you could tell me a bit about your experience as a WSIC. I believe now you're in your third year, correct, Heidi? <laughs> yes, three wonderful years as a WSIIC. Um, yeah. In the beginning, a little bit of struggles, and um, finally met you, Armando, and uh, it was Vinish, and and actually Amalia was there too, um, at the convention in Boca Raton, and boy oh boy, that's when my business really took off. So yes, it's been uh, two and a half wonderful years working exclusively with WSIALM. And uh, two and a half very very successful years. So yes, three years. <laughs> there's been there's been up and downs, but like any business, you know, uh, one of the things that I've enjoyed working with Heidi is really her her uh, uh, commitment and persistence. You know, uh, we understand that it's very tough and challenging. Sometimes sometimes you know hitting the road uh, on yourself and hitting roadblocks. Uh, but yeah, it's been um, uh, a fun and uh, a funning a fun. Uh, <laughs> experience, right? <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. It's a roller coaster ride. 
and uh, you know, I I really feel for all the ICs on the call because believe me, on a day to day, I know what you're going through. But you know, if it were easy, everybody would be doing this, right, Armando? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Now, kind of diving a little bit into into your background and experience, uh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, and, and hopefully I did a good job in introducing your profile. But <laughs> but I know that you have uh, you have had experience with marketing automation even before you joined uh, you joined WSIS and IC. Uh, you were involved in the, in the, uh, some major projects and some certifications that you've done. So perhaps you want to share a little bit about that. Sure, I can, I can certainly share. Uh, one of the reasons that I grabbed onto the opportunity of marketing automation is because I used to work for a firm called ADP Canada and I was their uh, national digital marketing manager. And within that role I was responsible for demand gen via the Canadian corporate website. And I also worked with international teams, so I had a seat on the international, they called it the digital marketing committee. So each country manager had a seat on this committee and um, global headquarters which is in uh, the United States in New Jersey had uh, a few technologies that they worked with. Salesforce CRM, Eloqua which was uh, subsequently bought by Oracle and we had a CRM as well that we worked with. And my job was to, as the National Digital Marketing Manager, was to ensure that all these things were integrated. So it was very much um, client side, which is pretty odd for a consultant. Uh, I didn't like client side, by the way, just in brackets. I much prefer consulting side, like what we're doing now. In any case, um, that being said, I was responsible for making sure our Google AdWords, our search engine optimization, uh, anything that we did in the way of campaigns, all fed through the website. And the campaigns were all run via Eloqua. So Eloqua is a marketing automation tool for like mega business. And um, also feeding through to Salesforce CRM. So I was responsible for that, uh, you know, for all the field mappings and the integration and making sure the reporting was accurate and so on and so forth. So that was um, the reason why when marketing automation started to get spoken about at WSI, I grabbed onto it right away. And I think that the, the first iteration of marketing automation at WSI was with HubSpot, which me personally, I don't qualify as marketing automation. I qualify it as inbound marketing. It's a very, very different play. But uh, since WSI started working with HubSpot, HubSpot has expanded their offering considerably. So like you said, it's all about finding the right tool for the right client at the right time to make them successful. I hope that helps. No, no, excellent. Uh, thanks, Heidi. And and you're definitely right. That's uh, that's very important uh, to always uh, look what's best for the client because at the end of the day, you know, you continue. There's an opportunity to service the client, or you inherit that client, and you have to definitely be able to show results, right, based on on, on what their needs are. And uh, you mentioned that because of the uh, the uh, the push from uh, or the yeah, well, you can say the push or the the uh, from WSI to move into marketing automation. Uh, you added this uh, to your list of services and solutions. Uh, perhaps you can share a little bit about that experience. Uh, uh, you know, in the past uh, uh, 12 plus months, that you've now been out there working with uh, some SMBs, right, uh, as well as some mid-sized projects. Uh, a little bit about your experience working in marketing automation. So let's start with the client side, uh, because you know when you are selling or you, when you're consulting an offer digital marketing services, uh, it's a little bit different than when you are now introducing uh, uh, a, a, a larger technology, perhaps, uh, implementation, as well as the services that go with it. So perhaps you want to share a little bit about your experience working with, the, with, your, with clients, with your clients in that, in that capacity. Sure. Uh, one of the things, uh, Armando, that you alluded to at the beginning of your talk was the fact that we put some marketing muscle behind the technologies. And oftentimes what I encounter are um, implementers who understand the technology and can do a really excellent job of implementing the technology. 
But then the companies that we're coming across have sometimes implemented these technologies and it's just sitting there not doing anything for them because they don't have what we always refer to as the marketing muscle to run them effectively and get what they want out of them. So unlike other automation platforms, marketing automation is hugely dependent on our core competency as digital marketers and your core competency of delivering stellar uh, experiences. So that combined, so my experience in understanding you know what isn't working for clients and being able to propose the right strategy along with WSILM all of a sudden they're seeing their funnels fill up because there's the marketing intelligence behind uh, what they've implemented and oftentimes also you know the technical implementation and integration is all fine and but they don't know how to set up their campaigns they don't know how to set up drip programs. They don't know how to set up their forms. All of these things have not been done with a marketing conversion focus in mind. And that's where the differentiator is. And this is where we as consultants uh, have a leg up on anybody in MarTech. It's because we know how to fill those funnels and we know how these are supposed to run. Because basically these are only tools to enable um, best in breed or best in class digital marketing. So if you're not filling it with best in class digital marketing, you're not going to get best in class data or insight or ROI. So this is where the differentiator lies and this is, this is the main reason why I partner with ALM because um, I, in my estimation, I have the best digital marketing team um, in the country, probably on the continent and maybe even the globe. I mean, I've never met anybody better. So that's uh, that's my cool. Thank you, Heidi. I always take your 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 uh, your uh, your feedback and your kudos. So I, I appreciate that. Uh, well, and it's true. And it's true. We've been working with. <laughs> We've been working together now, and uh, you know, for quite a while, and and uh, you know, both of us have kind of gone into situations and with clients, and I think uh, you can probably tell me a little bit about that as well. Is that you know, there's two types of opportunities that exist within W within marketing automation for the consultants. Uh, there's one where it's a brand new client that you're introducing them, and you're going to help them with the implementation, walk them along the road of uh, marketing automation. And there's the, then there's the other uh, type of a client that you and I have actually uh, been uh, involved in where they're lost. You know, they've uh, implemented uh, X, Y, Z technology, and uh, when we get in there under the hood, only 15, 25% of the, of the technology has been fully optimized. Uh, there's a lot of gaps because internally they don't have the resources, the knowledge, uh, the experience, budgets, et cetera. There's a lot of reasons they're not, you know, that you and I have found. Uh, but um, don't you don't you think that this is a great opportunity for 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 uh, uh, for ICs as well? Not just looking at okay, who do I have to go and sell a market emission, but you know, try to find areas or opportunities where somebody already already has implemented a solution but needs some some consulting. Yeah, yeah, uh, you're so right, Armando, and we have gone into those situations together. So, um, by the way, guys, if uh, in case you don't know. When I go into a client, I'm never going in alone. I'm backed with uh, the knowledge of everybody at uh, WSILM. So that is a very huge plus for me. And also when I go in there and uh, I talk to clients, and this is an opportunity for all of you. Um, we're a bit saturated in the marketplace with lesser, um, what would I call it, they're not even digital marketing people. They're spaghetti at the wall people. You know, they say, hey, I can do your PPC for $99 a month. Whoa, whoa, and I'll get you to the top of, you know, Google search and so on and so forth. We're competing against those, you know, those lounge lizards, smarmy people who are doing the cash grab, and we're trying to do it with integrity, and it's difficult. However, if uh, the marketplace is not so saturated with incompetence as um, it is in digital marketing. So we know that the marketplace is fraught with incompetent people out there trying to do this from, you know, 
um, the basis of cash grabbing and so on and so forth. So what happens with marketing automation, the beauty of it is uh, it can be a foot in the door. So you can get in there and say, listen, I have the people who will be able to fix this for you. And not only will we be able to fix this for you, we will be able to give you best in breed digital marketing to fill these funnels. So that's one thing. Then there's another thing. When you have somebody who has the funding to do it, now I would always recommend if they don't have good digital marketing, you need good digital marketing to be able to do marketing automation well. But if they do have good digital marketing, so say they're an existing client of yours, they have good digital marketing, but they have disparate systems for measurement and it's not integrated on ROI and you know you find yourself cobbling together reports for them marketing automation is for them. So it can go both ways. So if you're going in uh, the marketing automation route, you can help them fix the broken marketing automation, which so often happens because there are technical people to implement it, but they are not the marketing people to feed it. And then on the other on the other side of the coin, there are people who have good digital marketing, but don't yet have the marketing automation that helps them um, sort of compete with their, their, their bigger competitors or even get a leg up on their competitors. It's, um, it's a very, very good opportunity. Marketing automation is definitely the future of digital marketing. This is something that we all need to be incorporating into our talk track, into our um, selling methodology, and into, you know, when we're telling people exactly what it is that we provide, we need to include marketing automation as something that we also do. Because you can also get the managed services, and managed services, again, are an opportunity for recurring revenue. So think about that. It's very, very important. And it helped me big time in my business because I make more money on every deal now that I'm doing that. I hope that helps. Was that long-winded? No, no. <laughs> no, it's okay. I mean, I think that we cover a few of the questions that I wanted to ask. But uh, and you talked about the fact that you do encourage uh, ICs to uh, start, you know, uh, talking about marketing automation and perhaps not be shy about it because it's something new, right? But um, based on your experience, uh, uh, you know, since you started working with, uh, and I'm going to get a little bit lower to the SMBs, as you know, uh, the small medium-sized business segment, which is what primarily WSI. ICs follow or target. Um, what are any recommendations that you would uh, uh, give, you know, in regards to uh, whether it's the approach, uh, whether it's the message, the education, or even once you have them uh, 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 on board with the tool, how do you continue to manage them? Uh, so, any recommendations uh, that that you can provide to an IC that still, you know, kind of saying, well, should I be incorporating this into my into my services? Uh, what would you recommend in regards to you know these are the things that you know best business practices that you've learned over the over the past uh, uh, year plus? Yeah. So with the SMBs, what I would go in saying is, you can do world class marketing automation with a very very small team. You don't need to have a big team to be able to compete in your space and do marketing automation and do it well. In fact, you may be doing a little bit of work up front, Mr. or Mrs. Client, and that is only on the research side of things and how we're going to set this up for you and getting to know your business. But once it's automated, it's automated. And you can repurpose content. You don't have to be creating content all the time. This is the fallacy that everybody believes, is that you have to be creating content all the time, every single day, and it's content, 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 content. You can create great content once and slice, dice, repurpose, chop. You can use it for your social media. You can use it for your marketing automation. You can use it for a campaign. You can use it on your website. You can repurpose content. So it doesn't have to be labor intensive. And once it's automated, it's automated. You get the insights. So you can actually have a quarterly content calendar, which we all know we can create with a quarterly content calendar and even great ASEO. You have some content that comes out of ASEO that you can repurpose and automate all of that and get all those insights. 
So really, it doesn't have to be rocket science. It's just doing the right things at the right time with the right tools. Excellent. No, no, I, I, I totally agree with you, and it's good because of uh, the experience that you've had specifically with you know, small, medium-sized companies that they're probably bud mo most likely budget conscious, and they're afraid to take that leap. It, you know, an IC, a, a consultant can now uh, take them uh, through the process uh, as you have done with your c clients uh, one step at a time, right? And yeah. like you said, you always say it's not about boiling the ocean right away, but it's it's about building their their marketing automation practice one you know one day one month at a time uh, through you know the right uh, 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 the right strategy and you know the right uh, uh, content marketing strategy as well. Yeah, you need to take them by the hand and lead them down that path because they're like deer in the, heads, in the headlights. They're petrified of this. They know that marketing is changing and they think it's going to cost them an arm and a leg and it's going to cost them their business and it's um, the complete opposite. It will cost them their business if they don't do it. That's the thing. They need to be doing world-class digital marketing. They need to be doing marketing automation and uh, they can do it on a budget. And it's our job to teach them and show them how. So take them in a crawl, walk, run approach. Earn their trust, gain their trust. Let them know that you're with them. Make sure that they understand that you're, you're a partner. You're not just trying to take their money and run. That you're here for the long haul. And you will get lifetime value out of the clients. I think Chuck Bankoff talked about that at our global convention. He keeps clients for like four years. That is a beautiful lifetime for a client. Imagine if you can sell this once and then keep your client for four years as you build your business. Um, it's outstanding. And this is definitely the way to go and they can do it. All you need to do is earn their trust. So what I always say is they're going to cross that bridge of trust once and they're going to cross it with somebody. It's our job to make sure they cross it to us. Mm -hmm. Because we know in our hearts we do the best for them, right? Yeah, no, uh, definitely, definitely. And I, I've seen that uh, one of the things that I've enjoyed working with you is because of that, the fact of the matter that, you know, we don't, it's not about selling your client, it's about earning their trust, developing that relationship with them on a, not just on a short-term basis, but on a long-term basis because it's a win-win situation. So um, that's one thing that I can kind of say very, very uh, um, uh, uh, proudly as well as, uh, uh, I can confirm that that's the approach that you've taken, and then specifically when sometimes it's it's with a new um, with a new solution or a new system or a new idea, marketing idea to implement it. But uh, thank you, Heidi, for 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 having you uh, this uh, this morning at our webinar. I know that uh, some of the ICs uh, typically, actually, as a matter of fact, the majority of them uh, listen to our our webinar. Uh, uh, during the week or, or after we've uh, recorded it. So to anybody that uh, wants to get in touch with, with Heidi uh, to, you know, to get her experience and her uh, perspective as a consultant, um, you know, you can definitely reach out to her. And I know that you're very active on social and uh, LinkedIn is one of the tools that you're very active with and you're always posting the latest, uh, the latest uh, um, reports and studies and, and you know, I'm always uh, kind of uh, downloading some of the stuff that you always send out. So you can definitely reach out uh, Heidi via LinkedIn and uh, uh, it, you know, it's Heidi Schwendi, and if you want to email her, uh, can I share your email, Heidi? I didn't ask for your permission, so this is Castle. <laughs> I, I, I want to be Castle compliant, so uh, uh, you know. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And Absolutely. I apologize. I apologize. I didn't uh, write it on the um, on the uh, on the uh, slide here, but it's Heidi Heidi dot Schwendi at wsidedigitalmoxie.com. Uh, I know that Heidi's you know she's always worked with. Uh, other uh, uh, WSI consultants and helping them, so um, you know, definitely uh, worth uh, uh, if you need if you have any questions, be able to connect with her. Uh, but uh, thank you again for having having you here, and uh, uh, hopefully in the next uh, three to six months we may come back to this webinar and and bring some other new stories in our adventures out there. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> Chris, over to you, and uh, I don't know if you have any other any if there's any questions or anything you want us to discuss. No, that's fantastic. Heidi, thank you so much for joining us today. This has been fantastic. Some great insight into the, the work that uh, you do and the work that you've done with us. This has uh, been phenomenal. Thank you again for joining us. Oh, my absolute pleasure. Anytime, guys. Anytime. Great.
Great. Now, uh, just uh, one more item to cover. Uh, Amalia, if you'd like to uh, touch on our uh, promotion. Yeah, certainly. I just want to have uh, send everybody a quick reminder that uh, our promotion is running until October uh, 31st of this year, obviously. We only have five days left, so please take advantage of this promotion. Um, it is at the low cost of $4.99. Uh, again, there is a separate cost that is affiliated for the template, which is 100 uh, with a grand total of $599, which is an, a phenomenal deal. Uh, the template basically includes uh, that it's fully responsive, there's 30 pages of integrated content, blog mod module, and all the other additional items that are uh, indicated in this chart here. Uh, one great other attribution is the 15 images from a shutter shock that's included in there, which is a value of $250. And for businesses without logos, we could add a simple logo to the website. Website. And this also includes one hour of CMS training. So don't let this pass you by. It's a great promotion. Please contact either uh, myself or Armando or Warren uh, or Morella, and we'd be more than help, happy to help you. Okay, thank you. Fantastic. Thanks, Amalia. That brings us to our end of our webinar for today. Uh, let's take a look at the questions and see if there's anything here. Uh, we have a question. Uh, how do I best define marketing automation to a prospect via email to begin a dialogue? Uh, I, well, I, I, what I would recommend is that uh, what you would uh, should be able to do is, uh, I know there's a couple of blog posts on the WSI uh, uh, website that talks about marketing automation. There's actually, as a matter of fact, one video that uh, was created by uh, head office, and you can definitely use that as a tool. Uh, if you um, uh, would like more information on that, uh, feel free to email me and I can send you some links to some of the sites that I follow or I keep in touch just to be on, 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 uh, on the marketing automation um, uh, radar. Uh, as well as uh, the, the, you know, the companies that we work with, I know Pardot, uh, Salesforce Pardot has a great blog uh, that talks a lot about educating on marketing automation, uh, HubSpot as well, and SharpSpring. Uh, they, you know, you can kind of introduce a, a, a blog post uh, uh, and also maybe a video that WSI has done. I know that WSI head office has done one on that. So um, I think that that's, a, that's an important aspect. But you know what, when it comes to emailing, perhaps the next, the next time you visit or you have a conversation with the client is where you introduce a conversation to them. And uh, most likely if your client is looking at a CRM, uh, mo most likely the next logical step for them will be to move into marketing automation. So there's a couple of ways of approaching them. Fantastic. Thanks, Armando. Uh, that looks to be the only question right now. Last call for questions. If you got anything else? Okay. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for attending today. Uh, once again, Heidi, I'd like to thank you for joining us. Uh, you've been fantastic as always. I'd like to thank Armando and Amalia for joining us as per usual. If you would like to reach out with any questions or you do have uh, any inquiries or would like some follow-up, please reach out to any member of our sales team here today. Once again, I've been Chris Ballon, Marketing Manager here at ALM. Thank you for joining us and we look forward to speaking with you uh, and uh, you joining us for our next webinar in our Launchpad webinar series. Thanks everybody, take care and have a great day.